Good morning. We'll give folks a few more minutes to be able to come on in. Hi, Dems. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Emily. Mic check. Okay, up to you. Hi, Emily. Hi, everyone. Hello. Oh, see, perfect. Like, we, I do like a, a small call at like the top of the hour to be able to like, do you need a mic check? Is there, has Zoom decided that your mic no longer works in between the last meeting and this meeting? Mine still works because they're all Zoom meetings. <laughs> you know, you know, you, you would say that, but that like it changes sometimes between the two. That's true. It's whether or not I have done an update between meetings. Right? Yeah, no, like the did the client update? Well, who, who knows? And clear. Mm -hmm. We'll give folks a few more minutes. Hey, there's Katie. Dims, I am not expecting quorum on this meeting, but we also do not need it. So, like, rock and roll, carry on, it's story time. All right, with three minutes after or so, we've got like some items of discussion initially, and then from there we can move on and take updates. So, Dims, I will pass it to you if you're ready to kick us off. Cool. Um, this is the usual policy notice. Um, you made it! <laughs> you're already here, so. <laughs> <laughs> this is where we live, and... DOC members present today, updated over in um, the uh, public meeting. Yes. Uh, and now, here we go. Okay. Tag updates. Yay, new order. Uh, so are we doing random? Uh, no, we're not doing random order. It is now reverse alphabetical because previously it's been alphabetical for like, you know, um, several years. And now we're going to move it back to like, you know, reverse al alphabetical. Um, but it uh, looks like everyone's got their slides updated today. So. Sounds good. Uh, tax storage. Uh, well, actually, we're going to do the, the outstanding te uh, TOC items for discussion Ooh. first, because I wasn't sure if we were going to get everybody here. So um, we'll kick yeah. us off with that. Okay. Um, did folks get a chance to look at the first issue? That's a GitHub issue in CNCF TOC. Essentially, we used to have a group of people called TOC contributors. Uh, they added themselves to contributors.md in the root folder for CNCF POC repository. This was when we didn't have the concept of work groups or um, you know tags, etc. So this has been there for a long time, um, and uh, I think it's time to like stop doing it and tell people to move to tags and working groups. So uh, any questions here on the background itself? Going once, going twice, okay. So now then the question becomes, hey, let's clean that up. What do we, what can we do with these folks? Um, how do we engage these folks uh, in the activities of uh, tags and working groups? Uh, that would be the next question. 
uh, any thoughts, ideas from fellow TOC members or the community? I mean, I think this is long overdue, but um, <laughs> I can kick off discussion with that, passing to somebody else. Yeah, so uh, I did send, uh, I did go through uh, the list. I generated uh, a list of email addresses from that contributors.md and I sent them all, um, you know, a heads up saying, hey, this is going to go away. Uh, please, um, you know, go look at uh, engaging yourself in work groups and uh, tags. So one idea did we did have in that issue was um, instead of TOC contributors, can we have tag and working group contributors um, so that they we could also um, display uh, profiles of those folks working in specific tags and working groups on our website instead of the TOC contributors. Um, but I think there was at least a few concerns there. Uh, Emily, did you want to talk about like how it has been difficult to keep a list of active contributors in a tag? Yep, we can talk a little bit about that. So tag security um, has a very wide community um, of individuals that have expressed interest over the years that the group has been formed. Um, as with most things in life, folks come in for a season. Sometimes they come in for a particular reason and sometimes they just stick around for the long haul. Maintaining that list um, we've actually, um, within tank security, not found it particularly useful um, as individuals change companies that needs to be updated if they're no longer active in the tag, then it becomes stagnant. Um, and that information becomes out of date, they may not be contacted by that uh, GitHub handle or email or even company information any longer. So it just becomes a maintainership burden to keep those listings up to date, particularly when you reach over 50 individuals when you start reaching around the 200s it, it gets a little ridiculous um however there was concerns within tag security that we want to be able to recognize the individual members that are actively contributing um and we've we've had an open issue with the cncf about doing some form of badging to show work in the group however um attendance and just recording name and attendance listing is a good way of being able to from a public record being able to point to point back to participation, either in a working group, in a tag, or in some other form of meeting, not just through the commits themselves to the repo. Uh, Richie, Alolita, uh, Katie. Alolita's been unmuted for a while, so then Richie. <laughs> Oh, Go ahead, Alolita. No, uh, I think I, I mean, I totally agree with Emily and, and uh, that's the kind of um, participation that, you know, we've also seen in the observability tag. Um, it's, it's just that very specific to sp uh, topics as well as areas of projects that are in, um, and, and they're also end users joining in, which is, which is great to have discussions about, but um, there is, there are just a handful of folks who actually are consistently available and participate. Right. Uh, so there is a couple of twists to this uh, thing too. Like I'll ask the question a little bit later. Um, uh, Richie, Katie, did you have anything to talk about here? Yeah, Richie, go ahead. No, I said I didn't raise my hand. I, I, I agree with Alolita. Um, most of the time, it, uh, the people who stick around long term tend to be the same ones, uh, and you tend to see them again over the years, again and again. Um, I also agree that a lot of those tend to be in this call. <laughs> <laughs> um, For sure. <laughs> I, um, I mean, open telemetry is something interesting where they basically count contributions, and this can be code, this can be PRs, this can be. Uh, this can be reviews on issues. This can also be participation in calls. And then um, there is an automated system, or I hope it's automated, <laughs> to um, to count those contributions. And and if you are above a certain threshold, you are a member of standing for X amount of time. Um, yeah. I find this super interesting as a concept. So DevStats does do that for us. Uh, there is one. Uh, there's a page for no, not that well. 
Um, you can't hear you. Research. You can't? Test, test, test. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Uh, so, for example, uh, for meetings and such, that's something which right. DevStack doesn't, doesn't yeah, capture. That's what I was going to say. Only... It counts some stuff and so it, it can't yeah. do uh, things that are not there in GitHub. For yes. sure. Yeah. And the interesting approach about what Open Telemetry does is, as far as I'm aware, it also or the the contributions in in um, in calls and participation and such are also accounted for. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's an overall contribution participation included anywhere. Uh, you know, all the way from outreach to uh, code. Um, so, where does this tooling live, Alerja? Um, it, it's actually typically, uh, Devs, there is a group, a uh, community group, uh, as a community SIG within the project. And typically, you know, all the participants, for example, in the uh, SIG meetings or any of the additional discussions are typically noted on the, you know, just as the TOC noted on the uh, attendee list. And those are then partly manually compiled and partly obviously synced with the dev stats for a final stats uh, update. Okay. Yeah, so uh, the, the reason why this is important, uh, this problem is important is uh, a couple of reasons, right? One is when you have to run an election for something or the other, right? Yeah. Like how, how do you know who needs to vote, right? Um, yes. So uh, in Kubernetes also, there is a threshold for voting for steering, for example. Um, so that in general seems to be like a good pattern to follow, um, uh, counting contributions across uh, multiple stuff. Um, there was something else that I remembered, but you know, it'll come back to me. Um, Matt, did you have a comment? Um, no, I'm just trying to thank you to everyone. <laughs> oh, no, I, I joined a few minutes late. I had a meeting run over. Are we talking about uh, the effort around, um, uh, you know, having having something that's queryable or data driven yeah. around you know, who's who and what's what? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that landscape graph project, I don't know yeah. what was already talked about, but that is part of the data model. Um, we're looking at uh, firming up the interfaces uh, by defining them in GraphQL and the implementation of that core schema is underway now. Um, there's a pictorial version of it up in the repo, but um, I hope this week to have the initial um, core GraphQL compositional model and all of that. We have a we have a few words on it in the in the tag observability slide, but, but this was a concern we had at the tag that we thought we might be able to solve for us as well as the communities outside of our tag, like the other tags and the other working groups. Absolutely. So the other problem that uh, why this is important is like how do we get more contributors to come to our um, project or SIG or TAG or working group, right? Um, and how do we, when they are here, how do we keep them around, um, keep them interested? Uh, so that that was the reason like, okay, if uh, we tag them through some mechanism and we show up on the website, maybe that gives them an incentive to participate. I don't know, or at least, you know, um, gives them some visibility it gives others some visibility on who is participating in a tag or a SIG or a working group. I think that's, that's definitely a good incentive because I do think that, you know, it supports folks who are in different companies to actually get more time to spend on the projects as well as the, uh, you know, just supporting different TOC uh, and, and CNCF uh, activities. And, and I think that that's a good good cycle to have. Um, there are also, you know, other ways um, like Open Telemetry, you know, has done blog posts to call out, you know, special projects and contributors over time uh, from a project level. Uh, just just you know, thanking contributors for working on a specific area. Right. Um, we do. Uh... We do have some awards and stuff uh, during KubeCon NA for uh, for uh, recognizing people for sure, uh, but yeah, that's only like the top cream, as so to say. Um, let me look at the chat. Uh, Ricardo, did you have anything that you wanted to add here? 
Yeah, the well, one thing is the, I mean, they're talking about it in the chat. It's maybe having different levels, right? But that that's a longer discussion, I think, like um, sort of batches and because um, you know, somebody mentioned that some people show up like in one meeting and then they never show up again. But at least we have to acknowledge some of those people too, but maybe at a different level. And then there's people who show up every day and that may constitute contributors or people who do contributions on GitHub all the time that, that also may uh, constitute as contributors. But yeah, in essence, I think it's just, you know, maybe having some sort of level, but I think um, it's a longer topic. It sounds like everybody is interested in this and wants to be able to figure out the details. Um, probably need to be able to have another meeting for this. Uh, do we want to be able to talk about like the uh, graduation requirement changes, yeah. Dims? Yeah. Um, so what I would say is, uh, uh, please add your thoughts and ideas into into that GitHub issue, and we can uh, you know we can collate later and figure out like are there specific things that we could do specific tooling that we can adopt um, across CNCF uh, and uh, things like that. Thank you. Uh, so next one is, um, oh, who can talk about this? Uh, I, Bob, is he, are you here? No, Bob is not here. Uh, Josh, did you have, uh, did you want to introduce the top, second topic? Burkus? Yes. Um, so uh, the basic idea here is, um, and honestly, part of this came because we were discussing some projects like etcd, for example, um, that we have projects that get to um, the graduated stage. And although they may have a diverse set of contributors right now, um, their governance rules don't act, a diverse set of maintainers now, the governance rules don't actually include any sort of succession planning for maintainers and, and not even any kind of a definite mechanism for how maintainers would get replaced over time. Um, and, um, and we haven't specifically required that. So the idea was to add this to the section that, that already you know, sort of requires um, government's documentation and stuff to clarify that that when we say governance documentation, that is something that's required. Um, so that the projects are thinking about it when they're applying for graduation. And so that we don't get in the situation where, um, you know, the, the OG maintainer leaves and suddenly we have a problem with the project. Right. Yeah, for sure. Uh, thank you for introducing that. So, uh, there has been, this is a PR um, that is in the CNCF TOC repository. And, uh, you know, there was some uh, churn and comments from different people on that uh, PR, and it's ready to merge. So uh, if, you, if you are all okay with this, uh, please take a look at it and give, give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down, and we can continue to talk about it uh, or um, you know merge it uh, in a couple of days so um uh, any thoughts here other than uh, what what josh just uh, talked about twice matt has a hand go ahead matt go for it uh, i'll try to be brief bright and gone um i'll review the pr but uh, there's also the concern of um, you know, a singular vendor or company having all of the maintainer or ownership rights to, to a project. And, and over time through incubation, you know, as vendors hire maintainers, there's a natural trend to consolidate, uh, you know, technical direction and ownership potentially. Uh, it's another one of the things that, that, that we want to look at in terms of being able to identify where this is the case and before it becomes a, a serious issue. But but um, is that part of the thinking around around this PR? Or is this more focused specifically on on committer and maintainer lifecycle, right? Uh, do, do we get into you know? So, so this was to address the specific problems that we found during, for example, the HCD stuff. Uh, there are other projects uh, also um, that have started doing uh, cleanups 
um, Kubernetes did uh, as well last year, and uh, you know has codified some of those things. Uh, these things on like, okay, when do, when do you get off uh, from being uh, a reviewer or an approver for something? Uh, if you're not there for a year, um, you know you you are gone, right? Literally. So um, so this is just to offboard people so that we know we can take stock of who's around and who's not around uh, so that when like we have to raise flags right like the problem with HCD was like there was a lot of people on the maintainers list but they were not active they were not doing any work so when the two people who were like keeping up the keeping the lights on uh, left we didn't know about it like literally so that we could jump in we could catch problems earlier, um, but then just writing it down is not good enough. Uh, we need to periodically clean them up too. So uh, th that's another problem that we need to get to once we get this in. Um, but at least there should be a mechanism to get people off so that we can uh, add new people in. Uh, that, that, that's the kind of uh, thinking going on here. Uh, so just by itself, it's not enough. Uh, we need to think about the other things as a follow-up too. Thank you. Okay, uh, any other outstanding items uh, from the last uh, few weeks? Uh, I'm asking the TOC members here. Okay, uh, we can go on to the next one. Okay, tax storage. Uh, I see Shing here. Uh, Shing, are you talking today or is there anybody else? Yes. Yes. Hey, uh, this is uh, Shing from tax storage. Uh, so, from tax storage side, CubeFS is an incubating project now. And OpenEBS uh, is also applying for incubation. We send out an email in the TOC mailing list, we have some concerns regarding the status because uh, OpenEBS has a few storage engines, each with a different level of maturity. Uh, we are wondering how we're going to evaluate that during the DD process. We got a couple of uh, responses. I believe the suggestion is that that should not be the reason that pre pre uh, prevented from applying for incubation. Uh, so I think right now we are waiting for TOC sponsor. Are there anything else uh, that uh, we TOC need from the text story side on this? Um, I think uh, uh, Richie ended up talking to some of the folks involved in the effort. Richie, did, did you want to speak to the updates here on OpenEBS, what we are uh, thinking of? Sure. I mean, the current status is um, I didn't like I, I tried to speak to them. <laughs> I, I managed to half reach uh, some people and my the update which I got was um, that there's like or let me start at the beginning for for the benefit of everyone who hasn't read this on on the TOC uh, channel in on Slack. So um, I didn't see a lot of, of recent movement on Open EBS and it seemed a little bit. Um, stale. On the grapevine, I heard that there was a company acquisition and that led to the majority or all of the contributors to basically be pulled away or joining other companies, but in short, uh, brain drain from the project as such. Tried to verify this um, by reaching out to the project that didn't go very far. Um, then through back channels also tried to reach people more and got partial replies, which are basically um, that people are trying to onboard new people onto, onto the project, but haven't seen any, any movement on those um, since then. So it's been, I think, a month, maybe one and a half months since then. Um, yeah, that's the current status. It doesn't look great at the moment. Yeah, so uh, Shing, essentially at this point, we have to hit the pause button on, on this uh, right now. Okay. And we'll take a checkpoint maybe in a, in a couple of months to see if they are able to get back on their feet. And worst case scenario, we have, we have the archiving process uh, you know, that we can apply to this. 
Okay. Okay. I, see. I mean, before we archive, we would probably reach out to see if there's like do some PR work on, hey, are there interested maintainers? Do yeah. companies want to step up and sponsor maintainers? Like all those things um, would I think come before we go into the archiving pro process. But right. as you can tell from us naturally talking about the archiving progress uh, process, it really doesn't look great at the moment. Right. And I'm glad that. Uh, I'm really glad that we caught this before incubation. <laughs> so, did, did you uh, did you talk to uh, Nick Connie? That he uh, is the one who has been communicating with us. Um, so, Shin, just oh. ping Richie with with the name later uh, on Slack. Oh, okay, sure, we'll sure. Continue okay, continue the discussion there. Uh, would you uh, go back to where you stopped? Please? Yes. Yes. Okay. And uh, Curve 3 system, uh, it's applied for a sandbox. They presented at uh, text 30 meetings. We recommended it to TLC for a sandbox. Uh, is it waiting for a vote now? I'm not sure what's the status for Curve. The, the I, I don't think they reapplied, did they? Yeah, they haven't reapplied. That's, that's oh. uh, what I'm seeing from um, sandbox cncfio i'm not seeing them on the list so they should reapply oh. that would be the next step oh, oh yeah seeing they okay yeah, yeah, yeah. No, perfect go back to the google form and uh, do a fresh application uh, okay and update with the whatever they talk with you uh Shane. uh okay maybe uh well maybe we can let them know maybe they don't know about this yes okay. that is probably it We're missing a step thank you okay all right thank you and we also have a clone pg they uh, they are applying for sandbox. They presented at our meetings. Uh, so it's a pretty interesting project. Uh, we would like to bring them back for some further discussions to understand more about their operator and uh, how that interacts with storage. And also uh, for the white papers, the cloud native disaster recovery white paper is now published in our repo. And this other white paper on performance and benchmarking still needs some final work to wrap up. Uh, we have been uh, asking CNCF storage projects to do a project update in our tech meetings. So far, we have got Vitas and ATCD that has done a, a project update. Uh, so we will have uh, Zhuk and Longhorn coming next. That's nice. all. Sounds good. So uh, for the paper that you already published in the tag repository, is there something that we need to do um, to get it out, so to say, some publicity or something like that? Uh, oh, yeah, that would be nice. Uh, uh, how do we do sure. this? Um, I don't know. What, we had this uh, white paper on the storage landscape white paper before. I'm not sure what is normally the process for this. I'm going to take it into the service desk for yeah. design work and we'll take it on from there. Yeah. yeah. Tag security also has the process documented in their repo for the yeah. paper processes. Highly recommend taking a look at that. Okay. Oh, okay. I'll take a look. Okay. All right. Anything else, Shane? That's it. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next one. Yay. Hey, Pushkar, please go. Yes. So couple of three uh, small updates and one big update uh, for everyone who doesn't know me, I'm one of the tax security tech leads uh, joining on behalf of everybody else. So the first update is we've been trying to make our meetings uh, all time zone friendly. And one of the problems we had was we didn't have a liaison who was in a different time zone, which were non-US. So now that Andrew is our chair, uh, he is he's starting to have our first EMEA friendly meeting on 3rd August, uh, which is tomorrow. And we're going to see how that goes and kind of continue to learn on the job as we get more feedback on doing those meetings. Second update is uh, we started creating a draft on how to apply the best practices written down in the supply chain security white paper. Go, have been discussing with a couple of projects. If any one of you are interested to see how that can help your project, please drop a message in the issue uh, on the slides. Uh, last uh, small update is uh, we have had 
quite a bit of presentations lately uh, about four in the last i think couple of months or so uh, so we do this occasionally on our, in our regular meetings if you have a topic we have a issue template that you can use to request one for yourself uh, next slide amy all right so this is a big update uh, mainly because this was a long driven project for quite a few months uh, the gist of it is uh, tax security has a process to review and assess projects that cncf projects and help them make it more secure but there was no process to assess or review sub projects of a graduated project like kubernetes is a graduated project but a sub project like cluster api we weren't sure who would actually do it so eventually we ended up combining our powers together with the cncf tax security kubernetes sig security and sig cluster lifecycle that owns the sub project and uh, we came together kind of to start this pilot uh, so last i think couple of weeks back we finally merged the assessment which was basically a self assessment uh, driven by all of the three groups we have about 22 findings from using the stride model uh, 15 tracking issues to make sure that those findings are addressed and as part of this we also did our first uh, cncf fuzzing engagement for a sub project in kubernetes for and the report of that is linked in the slide that's it from me sounds good uh, any questions for pushkar great ones good guys thanks thanks a lot pushkar thanks for the update uh tagger and time ricardo yeah uh, every, everyone uh we haven't had a lot of meetings in the past month uh, but you know, we have a uh, few updates so in the containers and runtime space uh, there's a project called unicraft that addresses uh, unikernel development and tooling so we reached out to them and so they present in our meeting uh, we did have a presentation from schedule Uh, for this project called Bowman B that provides a docker life uh, or docker like experience for eBPF and that needs to be rescheduled that project applied for sandbox but um it, i think the feedback was to reapply later or to look for other i think it was to the eBPF um foundation or the EB, eBPF um uh, working area within the linux foundation so that was part of the feedback but uh we still want to have them presented our meeting if uh they would like to uh and in in terms of workloads uh, we had uh, a meeting schedule also for ray and kubraid and this project was um applying also for sandbox and it addresses distributed computing and i think there was some Uh, feedback uh, related to whether you know you want to include just kubraid or just ray or um, what was the i mean for the project to come back uh, and and provide more clarity in that area uh, but the presentation also got rescheduled and uh, or, or or we're looking to reschedule this armada is another project that addresses batch workloads Uh, this was uh, accepted into sandbox uh, so the folks on the project uh, from g research are pretty excited about that uh, one of the main maintainers and there's another project that just applied for sandbox it's called cured it's from weeworks it basically allows uh, kubernetes reboots or safe reboots so we reached out to them and also expect them to present in term in terms of uh tag runtime activities we uh continue to reach out to existing cncf projects so to so we get more involve, involvement from them more uh, presentations and more updates in the batch uh, system initiative working group um it can, is actually working on on a research or or, or more like a survey i guess is to 
to identify some pain points in the space and in terms of running this high performance and large type of workloads. And finally, the Kubernetes IoT working group uh, completed its migration to the CNCF and uh, uh, under the umbrella of the tag runtime. That's all the updates that I have and happy to take any questions if you have any. Uh, thanks, Ricardo. Uh, so I, I'll give you a couple of things um, that we can probably take back to the projects when they uh, talk to you again. So the Bumblebee present, uh, when we were, uh, TOC was looking at the Bumblebee one, I think what we were missing was uh, how does it help with applications that are deployed uh, on Kubernetes, for example. Um, and I believe they also talk to tag observability also around, you know, um, uh, uh, around the same. Uh, how can you use some Bumblebee to develop something that will help you with your application or workloads? Right. I think that portion was missing from the submission and it was missing from the, uh, we couldn't, it didn't come out clearly when we were looking through the website and looking through the documentation and stuff like that. So uh, when you talk to them, ask them also about like uh, Bumblebee as it is presented using the quick start and all is more like, okay, it, uh, it, there's a template, you write some code, then you can deploy it uh, as a, a container um, in, in DevonSense or whatever, right? Yeah. So how does it relate to, you know, the cloud native stuff and, other than yeah. just being a container is basically what we need to ask them. Um, and the Ray and Kubray was around, hey, uh, Ray has its own uh, community separate and Kubray um, wanted to be, uh, was actually in the submission, only the Kubray portion. And it, just for it to be an operator, um, we still have to kind of like write up a policy on like, do we allow projects that are only operators and they don't have anything else, right? Um, yeah. So some of the storage ones, for example, uh, hey, there is an operator, but operator is not the only thing in the project. There is several other things uh, around it. Um, Makes sense. Yeah, so uh, yeah. we need to kind of like, where do we draw the line? We need to talk that talk to that. Like if you get more information about like, what exactly are they thinking on how using Ray, but also solve the other problems that we have in the cloud native space um, uh, would be like a good thing to talk to them about. Sounds great. Well, thank you for the feedback and I'll, I'll pass that on when I meet with them. So. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? Um, Nikita, you had a, your hand up. Uh, yeah, so hi, I'm Nikita Ricardo. This was me who reached out to you this morning that I want to yeah, get involved sure. on Tag Runtime. Um, so you mentioned that the three, if I recall correctly, so the three working groups in Tag Runtime, so is that another working group other than the BSI and the IoT working groups? Uh, and my second question was around, are there any big ticket items planned? Uh, or just like what, what initiatives are planned for the IoT working group going forward? Yeah, so uh, we have... a. Uh three chairs in that working group. So uh, we'll probably reach out, we can reach out to them to, to find out more details about plans if you wanna get involved and wanna tackle some of the issues that they have outstanding. Uh, the other working group that we have in the tag is the container orchestrated device working group. So they're working on uh, how to define standards for devices in containers or device, uh, uh, like mappings and yeah, and how do you, you talk from a container to like a network device or or some sort of CPU or or other types of hardware. So yeah, happy to provide any info. Just reach out and um, I can connect you to the to working groups and and happy also to have you contribute to the tag. Thanks, that's useful information. We can uh, travel. Yeah. Thanks, Nikita. Uh, uh, Kathy, did you want to voice your question? Oh yeah. Okay. So so here, what you mean by uh, migration to of the IoT work group to CSF? Uh, does it mean that it's now you know um, part of the tag runtime? Is that yes. what you mean? Yeah, okay. that's correct. Yeah. So so the so the IoT working group uh, was under Kubernetes, uh, the Kubernetes community. 
And basically they wanted to expand their scope to not just Kubernetes, but other things that like are edge related and IoT related. So they said that they think it's better to be under the CNCF, which is more of a general umbrella. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thanks for he helping them through that uh, situation, uh, Ricardo. Thank you. Yep. Thanks. Uh, any other questions for Ricardo? Okay. Next slide, please. Observability. Uh, who's around today? Hi. Uh, uh, we've just got one slide, so I'll try to be again brief. Um, so over the last uh, really two months. There has been uh, a number of meetings, I want to say seven, six or seven uh, every few weeks, um, about adding uh, profiling as a new signal type to open telemetry uh, to join logs, metrics, and traces. Uh, I've put some links for those interested. There's a Slack channel and a number of documents that are, I wouldn't say primordial, um, uh, but you know, are, are definitely still in work in progress, although consensus is beginning to, to, to be consolidated and coalesce. Um, uh, the sort of next steps for that effort after basically uh, a good a good amount of discussion uh, from a broad range of people sort of inside the CNCF bubble and inside the hotel um, uh, bubble uh, is is to to generate a sort of a vision document an OTEP kind of like a KEP uh, an open telemetry enhancement proposal uh, that that doesn't get too prescriptive about design or implementation but just kind of uh, gives everyone something that we all agree on, uh, you know, around main goals and vision and, and like the top level scenarios. Uh, and then we want to garner feedback, not just from, uh, you know, the communities that are already already there and represented, but, but from some of the other folks that probably don't know the effort is happening, both in sort of the edge hardware uh, space where profiling, continuous profiling can be an, an important signal. Uh, we've reached out to uh, tag security or S tag, I'm not sure the right way to say it. Uh, uh, now, um, as you know, continuous profiling that's pervasive and, and, and systemic can form a, a, a really interesting, uh, useful signal uh, for anomaly detection and for intrusion detection and building building models and all manner of things of, of what normal looks like to identify when things are not normal or, or, or many other use cases um, outside of just application operator type scenarios where, where somebody wants to see how their stuff is doing, but th this affects cluster operators, network operators, you know, all manner of personas. And so we wanna reach out to those uh, however we can through our professional networks or otherwise. Um, next, we, we've started, uh, we, we've talked about it in months past, but we, we've actually started an observability speaker series. Um, our first speaker will be uh, on, August 6, on August 16th, and it's uh, uh, Liz Fong Jones uh, from Honeycomb. Uh, they've just released, uh, she's one of the authors, uh, they're one of the authors on um, a new observability book from O'Reilly that's been well received uh, in, in the domain. Um, the graph project that we've kind of mentioned in passing in, in meetings past, it has been gaining steam. I'll put a couple of links there about sort of current work and current thinking. I think in the last few weeks to a month, the, the, the biggest thing that's crystallized, I think, is how we're going to move forward with composing uh, you know, a super graph of a bunch of subgraphs so that domain experts, for example, folks from the security tag or folks from app deployment, if we if we go to uh, measuring deployments or, or the TOC itself on how we're modeling, you know, working groups and and various tags and, and, and roles that, that humans have in projects and, and groups within the TOC, uh, within the CNCF, you know, all of these things um, are, are, are different subgraphs where we will, we've wanted to spend some time putting together a compositional mechanism so that that can horizontally scale. So we don't have a monolithic schema uh, and then we can test independently uh, and let domain experts really inform the designs and the models um, that we eventually compose into a cohesive um, comprehensive graph. Um, so there's that. And then lastly, um, our KubeCon maintainer track uh, for KubeCon North America and Detroit uh, has been formally accepted. And so in the coming weeks to a month, uh, Alalita and I and some tag members, uh, whoever's interested really, uh, will start uh, in the open um, constructing sort of what, what we'll talk about and how, how we'll do that. Uh, yeah, and, and just to that, uh, Matt, thank you. Um, just wanted to say that we'd like to see more, you know, BOF sessions perhaps from the tags 
uh, especially for observability, given it's such a large community with you know, a, a lot of different projects uh, and, and participants showing up at KubeCon. So um, again, we'll follow up with Amy and uh, probably the CNCF team to figure out, you know, how we can actually do that in a more organized way. Yeah, boffs are usually the space problem, right? <laughs> like, exactly. So, yeah, so yeah, that's going to be tricky for sure. We might um, just do it in the hallway, but that's okay. <laughs> right. Everybody show up here. At this <laughs> yep. Time. Take a picture of the place where you have to meet or something. Uh, been there, done that for sure. Exactly. So yeah, uh, Richie, uh, Liz Fong Jones, um, how like? who's the audience and uh, how are you inviting people from the community for this? Uh... So uh, typically devs, what we do is we'll uh, kind of just post an, uh, you know, announcement on the different uh, observability groups, such as the project groups and um, uh, on Slack. And um, that typically does, uh, you know, pull in a pretty good audience as well as obviously social media and um, word of mouth from the speakers themselves. Um, okay. And that's what we've typically done. Is um, that enough? That's a question, right? Um, that's a very good point. I mean, again, I think that uh, we don't leverage the CNCF blog as much as we could, but I think that's also a very great, good channel for uh, being able to uh, get more folks involved. Yeah, thanks, Alilika. Uh, next one, please. Tag Network. Hey, guys. Hey, it's Lee here. Um, well, the Service Mesh Working Group, it's the most active working group that the tag has. Uh, the latest set of work or the newest set of work has been a continuation of Service Mesh patterns. So it's been a call for participation in defining um, a collection of um, well, deployment models, um, best practices, uh, like di different patterns by the way in which you know people are using various features of service meshes, and and those are being um, codified. There's a collection of them that are starting to emerge um, in uh, Meshery's catalog, which is linked there. Um, so whether you're interested in helping create uh, new patterns and define what those look like. Um, what's the best way to configure the sensitivity level of your circuit breaker? Or how many retries should you have um, between two services or what? Like those are kind of examples of things that these patterns try to address. And um, the catalog that's there is um, nascent, but um, the hope is that uh, those will be shared with the community. That was kind of part of the initial effort of defining what those patterns are and then beginning to codify their orchestration. So there's a call for participation there. Um, last time we met, there hasn't been progress on this, but we said like, hey, there's, uh, there's a need for uh, a sub-survey, one that gets really specific about uh, deployment patterns of service meshes, um, how they're being used and where, and there's kind of there's a litany of questions that different contributors within the tag um, have, and and that just aren't quite covered with some of the other surveys. Um, so again, just another call for participation if that topic is of interest. Um, I'll skip over to the right hand side and say I think I believe that the the upcoming presentation that we have. Um, would be from Network Service Mesh um, and at the NSM project. Uh, they'll, they'll present on another generic term, um, application service mesh, which is um, NSM acting as a, a mesh for other meshes or a mesh to help facilitate um, interconnectivity between Kubernetes deployments, operating at a lower network level, um, and then facilitating deployments of application level service meshes. So, so that's an upcoming topic. Most recent presentation, I think it was the last time we met, um, the Istio project presented. Uh, there's a the recording and the slide deck is is in the meeting minutes. Uh, and the most recent adoption into Tag Network was the Iraqi mesh, which, if you recall, uh, has a focus on 
um, uh, on filtering specific uh, network protocols or specific application level protocols uh, that that use that are used you know in communication between microservices and so yeah, yeah, yeah. sounds good thank you Lee uh, any questions for Lee uh, so one question I had Lee was um, uh, has the Istio folks settled down in uh, their new home at CNCF? Uh, yeah. they, uh, uh, they're, e uh, I'll say it like this, they're eager to be formal, you know, to, to be through due diligence or, or they're, uh, they'd like to be updated on status or, or you know, which, which is a great thing. So yeah, they, uh, they had a great presentation, just very well done <clears throat> um, presentation that they had given um, tons of, yeah, just, I mean, you know, just tons of statistics that were accounted for various you know, <clears throat> considerations around roadmap and integrations with related project or projects that are within the CNCF. Um, okay. Yeah. Thanks, Lee. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Next slide, please. Uh, TAC contributor side. Is that you, Josh, today? Yes, it is. Um, so real quickly, um, the design for contribute.cncf.io is going to be changing. Um, the uh, Linux Foundation design folks are making it consistent with the rest of the CNCF sites um, and honestly just much better looking in general. Um, uh, so we're looking forward to that. Um, I were, um, we've uh, drafted an email template to go to projects after they have their annual review, um, which is often a time when they need to be thinking about um, working on one of the things with the project that tag contributor strategy can help them with. Um, the, um, we've already gone over the, the lead, uh, the maintainer committer life cycle, um, issue there. Um, the, uh, one thing here is, um, the mentoring working group vote has been open for like a month. And I think we're still missing one vote, um, to pass it. Uh, the mentoring people are doing all kinds of things. And they're really eager to actually be official, uh, officially a working group. So if we could please have that additional vote from from whatever TOC member needs to give it, it would be nice. Um, uh, among other things, maybe doing a mentoring survey soon. Um, I they have a bunch of folks in New Zealand, and so they're going to be going to New Zealand Career Fair. So they'd like to be officially a working group of the CNCF if that can get voted in, please. Yeah, thanks a lot for that call out, uh, Josh. Uh, any of the TOC members uh, here, uh, if you haven't voted, please go vote uh, and uh, let's un unblock uh, this working group, please. Uh, thanks, Josh. Uh, next slide, please. Yay, we, we re we've reached the A series. Uh, who's on for today for app delivery? Uh, it's me. Uh... Uh, I'm Hong Chao. Uh, in case you didn't know me, I am a co-chair of the Tech App Delivery. Uh, I will give a quick update on the tech. So uh, first of all, uh, Captain has been approved for incubation and, and another project has been applying for Sandbox but was uh, recommended to uh, propose to the tech meetings. Uh, one of them is XSI Works from Alibaba. I also see the Cloud Native PG has been uh, proposed to uh, the the tech storage. Um, another thing is uh, KubeCon uh, North America is coming. Uh, we we submit a tech section for uh, one of our tech lead, Josh. Uh, also submit a session on Kubernetes uh, API resource model as a universal uh, management API. Um, uh, for the past uh, a couple of tech meetings, like we seen on the multi-tenancy white paper, it's uh, almost done. We we will publish it probably uh, soon. Uh, we're also seeing on the operator white paper, trying to uh, draft some ideas and get it more ready. And we also discuss like uh, writing an article about cooperative delivery and how it fits into existing model and, and like involves multiple projects like backstage uh, those, and, and cross plane. Those are CNCF projects. Um, yeah, that's our update. Thanks. Uh, uh, thanks, Hongcho. Uh, any questions for Hongcho? Once, twice. Yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. It's uh, you want to walk us. It's story time. <laughs>
Uh, we've got Cloud Custodian in voting. Um, Dave is currently out. Um, I'm not sure if Aaron's on the call for Keycloak. Come back to that one. Um, Cert Manager, actually, yeah, all of the things that are currently out there with sponsors, like no one, no one is here today. So um, we will, no way, Spiffy Spire, but Emily has already gone as well. So I guess we will leave that here. Okay, I think that's that's a good way to end today, right? Uh, anything else, Amy? Nope. That, nope. That, uh, we even made it in on time, which I was a little worried that we were not going to be able to do that. <laughs> Unless somebody has a question and wants to stick around. <laughs> Are you doing twice? Uh, a very brief one. Um, sure. What's the best way for tag co-chairs to interface with the TOC around sandbox stuff? Um, just in terms of communication, I, I kind of this topic for a future future day. I'm, I'm sure, but but as, as an example, like we, we just saw Phonio uh, was added in a quick look, and it's like, oh, that's GPL. <laughs> sure, that was already covered and talked about, but like, yeah, would it be uh, possible? To the simplest do that way, for a future discussion. Yeah. Well, the simplest uh, way Phonio. is use the uh, Slack uh, threads uh, in hash TOC or start a email thread uh, in uh, the TOC mailing list. Uh, those two should be fine. Let's, let's just use what we already have and uh, you know, like keep it light um, and not make it into a, a, a thing, okay? Okay, thanks a lot, everyone. Bye. Good to see all of you. Bye, all. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.